Your reaction to Gordon stepping away from football right now? I don't know any other way to put this in. I'm pissed. I'm disgusted. Because you can't get off the weed. Y'all ain't getting me to feel sorry for nobody like that. I thought it would turn out in a way like this. I'm still shocked because I know the pressure of addiction and what it does to families. And I know the lies that we, as addicts, that we tell those in our innermost close circle that they don't even know us. They think, dude, you can walk with people like this in life and you will not know them. It was more important for Josh to do whatever he did to violate the policy than for him to be able to show up to work. This story just tears me up. This is a sharp kid. This is a smart kid, perceptive kid, insightful kid, eloquent kid, still a kid. That part about it is it, it might never happen at this point. highly impressive and deeply flawed. Let me preface all of this by saying two things. If you are suffering from a substance abuse problem, there is help out there for you. I left the phone number to the USA.gov's emergency substance abuse hotline in the video description below. The second thing is that Josh Gordon has lived a very private life. He has not spoke on a lot of what has happened throughout his personal life. With that being said, let's start from the top. In April of 1991, Joshua Caleb Gordon was born in Houston, Texas to Elaine and Harold Gordon. He was one of three boys, and when Josh was around five years old, his father left, leaving his mom to take care of the family. This was obviously a struggle for his mother, and the family moved around a ton throughout his childhood. This created a massive amount of instability, and when a child experiences too much instability, they begin to act out. Josh had been expelled from two different middle schools for stealing. By just the seventh grade, Josh Gordon was already smoking weed, and by eighth grade, he started taking Xanax and codeine. It's quite clear that he was looking for anything to help cope with his home life, or lack thereof. He was also trying to adjust to the fairly new social norms of middle school. He didn't have a foundation to come home to and help ground him. Getting high became Josh Gordon's best coping method at a very, very young and impressionable age. Once he reached high school, he was attending a private Christian school, and as you can imagine, that did not work out. He was expelled from that school in the 10th grade and returned to the public school system. Unfortunately, Josh Gordon started hanging with the wrong crowd and got involved in Houston's gang scene. By his junior year, he was involved in multiple shootouts, sold drugs, stole, and a lot more. Now all this time, Josh Gordon was involved in sports, primarily track, basketball, and of course, football. Playing wide receiver was where he thrived the most, and he clearly had God-given talent. By his senior year, he was 6'3", 225 pounds. But at the age of just 17, he spent 35 days in jail for credit card fraud. When he was released, he was of course on probation. Being on probation meant that he could not leave the state of Texas. Now it wasn't so much about what university he wanted to attend, but what university he could attend. Baylor was his best option, so on January 26, 2009, Josh Gordon committed to Baylor University. Now, just because Josh was now a college student, that did not mean he was going to stop his old ways and turn his life around. No. In fact, it was the complete opposite. Josh Gordon stepped up from just selling weed here and there to a full-blown weed operation. He describes that he was bringing in around 10 grand a month from weed while he was a freshman at Baylor. During his sophomore year, he and a teammate were arrested for possession of weed, but to his luck, his charges were dropped. Maybe it was just a perk for being a Baylor bear. His sophomore year was really where he began to make a name for himself through his play on the field. He put up 714 yards on 42 catches and seven touchdowns. Unfortunately, he did not get to play during his junior year because he was kicked off the team after failing another drug test. Baylor was not giving him another chance. To Josh's luck, his great 2010 season had put him on the radar of several other schools. Utah is where he ended up, but he didn't actually play there because they were going to require him to sit for a year. 
At this point, he decided it was in his best interest to try getting into the NFL. However, because of all of his substance abuse issues at the collegiate level, he was not eligible for the NFL draft. This is where the supplemental draft comes into play. The NFL supplemental draft is a very underground thing to most people. This is primarily because so few players end up coming out of this draft. The supplemental draft is a draft that takes place every summer and is specifically for players who had eligibility or legal issues while in college. They can apply to be entered into the supplemental draft and it's up to the NFL on whether or not they're included. NFL teams know that the reason players are in this draft in the first place is because of discipline issues so severe that the universities essentially kick them to the curb. So teams usually don't really bother signing anyone from the supplemental draft. In fact, since its inception in 1977, only 46 players have ever been picked from the supplemental draft, with the most recent being the Cardinals taking Jalen Thompson in 2023. The most notable were Bernie Kosar in 1985, Chris Carter in 1987, and of course, our very own Josh Gordon in 2012. The Cleveland Browns were so desperate to turn their franchise around that what they saw from Josh Gordon's physical talent was enough for them to sign him. Josh Gordon was joining a Cleveland team that lacked highly talented players. His quarterback was Brandon Whedon. So it wasn't like Josh was joining a team that was stacked on offense and he was barely going to see the field. The Browns quickly began to use him and he became Whedon's number one target. Gordon's rookie season yielded 805 yards, 50 receptions, and five touchdowns. He was the Browns' top receiver. Unfortunately, the team as a whole was still no good and they went 5-12, which earned them last place in the AFC North. The next season, the Browns would only win four games, and despite having Brian Hoyer and Jason Campbell at quarterback, Josh Gordon had an incredible season. He would finish the year with 1,646 receiving yards, which led the entire NFL. Yes, even over Antonio Brown and Calvin Johnson. The 2013 season put Josh Gordon on the map as one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. Something else that was going on this entire time was Josh Gordon's continued drug and alcohol use. He would smoke and or drink before and after every game. It had become the only way he could function. It was so bad that in 2014, he was arrested for a DUI, which resulted in the NFL suspending him for 10 games. Then, in 2015, the Browns decided to take a plunge on a new quarterback in the draft, Johnny Manziel. Johnny football stock was still fairly high at this time, and a lot of the NFL world thought this was a great fit for the Browns. A true franchise quarterback to pair with one of the best receivers in the league. The only problem was, Johnny Manziel had drug and alcohol problems that ran just as deep as Josh Gordon's. So they had great chemistry off the field, forming a very tight friendship, but this did not result in success on the field. Johnny Manziel turned out to be an absolute disaster, and Josh Gordon would end up getting suspended for two consecutive seasons for substance abuse. The duo that many thought could pull the Browns out of irrelevancy was actually non-existent. Manziel and Gordon ended up only ever playing in three games together. Josh Gordon continued to spiral. He used those two years away from the NFL to continue using drugs and alcohol while also going in and out of rehab. Somewhere in there, he eventually hit a moment of realization and decided to legitimately try turning his life around. In 2017, the NFL reinstated him and Josh ended up playing in five games. In 2018, Josh Gordon decided to temporarily leave the game of football to focus on himself for a while. However, the Browns, as you can imagine, had enough of Josh Gordon. After a roller coaster ride of six years with him, the Browns decided to part ways with Josh. He would end up only playing in the first game of the season before the Browns traded him to the Patriots. Now, as a Patriots fan, I was excited to have Josh Gordon. We had a history for taking on polarizing players, whether we knew they were going to be polarizing or not. If there was any NFL team that would be able to get Josh Gordon on the straight and narrow, it would be New England. And for a while, 
they kind of did. The Patriots very carefully watched Josh Gordon when he was both on and off the field. He had a pretty good season. Josh Gordon played in 12 games that season as a Patriot and amassed over 700 receiving yards. Him and Tom Brady seemed to have a decent rapport at the very least. You can see that on display during the fourth quarter of this Thursday night game against the Colts. Josh Gordon ends up catching this absolute bomb from Brady and it ends up being Tom Brady's 500th touchdown pass ever. And it was to Josh Gordon of all people. But as the year went on, Josh Gordon once again failed a drug test. He preemptively stepped away from the game to say that he was working on his mental health, but it really didn't matter. The NFL suspended him again. This was a real shame because that particular New England team was truly great. Yes, I'm a bit biased, but the fact of the matter is they went on to win the Super Bowl that season. If he could have stayed clean, it would have made the ultimate comeback story for Josh Gordon's career by helping the Patriots win a championship. But that's not how real life works. Fairy tales are fairy tales for a reason, and addiction is a very difficult thing to break free from. The Patriots still issued Josh Gordon a Super Bowl ring because he did contribute to the team's success for a good chunk of the regular season. But Josh Gordon ended up auctioning off that ring for $138,000 in 2020, which is no big surprise because the ring probably didn't mean anything to him personally, seeing he wasn't involved in the team's playoff run. Gordon would return to the Patriots for the 2019 season, but he would unfortunately suffer an injury that put him on the IR for several weeks. Once he was cleared to play again, the Patriots waived him. It wouldn't shock me if the team found out that Josh was using drugs while he was on IR, and at that point, they were just done. The Seattle Seahawks picked him up, but his time there was very lackluster. Josh Gordon didn't seem to fit in very well with the Seahawks offense, so there were very few Flash Gordon sightings in Seattle. In November of 2019, his older brother was killed for reasons that still seem to be unknown to the public. This tragedy caused Josh to spiral downwards and he ended up relapsing again. The Seahawks would eventually sign him for the 2020 season, but the league hadn't actually reinstated him yet. He was part of the team, but he wasn't allowed to play yet. It wasn't until December of 2020 when the NFL reinstated him and the very next day, Josh Gordon was suspended indefinitely for violating the substance policy. As you can imagine, the Seahawks released him shortly after. At this point, Josh Gordon had been in the league for eight seasons and was on three different teams. He still believed he could play football professionally and had more to give the game. But where would he go? What team would actually want to sign him? He had been suspended six times at this point and was 30 years old. Where could Flash Gordon go? Well, just because he had more to give to the game of football, that didn't mean it had to be in the NFL. The FCF was just starting around this time, and Josh Gordon decided to get involved with his new frontier by playing for the Zappers. There's no city, they're just the Zappers, because the league takes place entirely in Atlanta, so I guess technically they're the Atlanta Zappers? What is the FCF, you ask? It's a fan-controlled football league. It gave the folks who were watching from home the opportunity to decide what a team should do next or vote in other in-game events. Kind of like Madden meeting an actual game of football IRL. The league received some of its funding from former and current NFL players like Marshawn Lynch, Richard Sherman, Chad Johnson, and Dalvin Cook. Apparently, FCF players were only paid $400 a week before taxes. The whole thing just seemed wacky and that's putting it nicely, which is probably why the league only lasted two seasons and they're now trying to bring it back for a 2024 season. However, Josh Gordon did not play in the FCF for all of its two seasons. In fact, he only played two games. He ended up applying to be reinstated to the NFL again, and the Kansas City Chiefs actually signed him to their practice squad. He worked his way off the practice squad and was part of the active roster by October of 2021. But much like in Seattle, the Chiefs really weren't using him all that much. And after bouncing between the active roster and practice squad a few times, the Chiefs released him in August of 2022. Surprisingly, the Titans ended up signing him. His time as a Titan was the shortest of any of his NFL stops. He was signed by Tennessee in September, and by October, they let him go. On the bright side, the Chiefs nor the Titans were cutting him because of substance abuse issues. 
At least, I don't think they were. They were letting him go because he was starting to look like a shell of himself. He was now in his 30s and wasn't showing these teams that he still had enough in the tank to be an effective receiver. In January of 2023, Josh Gordon was a part of another supplemental draft, the XFL supplemental draft. He was now a part of the Seattle Sea Dragons, and as ridiculous as it sounds, Josh Gordon had a great run in the XFL. But the XFL and USFL ended up merging into the UFL, and the Sea Dragons essentially got lost in the shuffle. As of 2024, Josh Gordon apparently has no interest in playing professional football anymore. I did some digging and really could not find out what Josh Gordon is up to today. The last time he posted anything on social media was about a full year ago. At this point, all we can really do is hope that Josh is winning the battle with his inner demons. We all know he became the poster child for not being able to get your act together, even when millions of dollars were on the line. But when you dig deeper and look at why he couldn't just stay clean, it makes sense as to where his struggles come from. It doesn't excuse anything but it does allow us to give some empathy to him. Only 1.6% of collegiate players end up making it to the NFL. So even if you only played a couple games in the NFL, that's a massive accomplishment that most people in the history of Earth can never say they achieved. With everything that Josh Gordon was enduring throughout his adolescence, he not only beat the odds by making it to the NFL, but at one point, he was arguably the best receiver in the league. Now think of the odds of reaching it to the top of that mountain once you're in the NFL. Josh Gordon had pulled off the impossible. Although the ridicule that he received throughout his career was self-inflicted, he really is a testament to how crucial your upbringing is. I once heard Colin Cowherd say that around the age of 10, you've already kind of developed into who you are going to be for the rest of your life. Of course, we all continue to learn new things and habits, but who you are at your core is really developed by the time you're a preteen. In the tale of Josh Gordon, that's a very, very scared and anxious child that didn't know what tomorrow would hold. He turned to all the wrong things to help reassure him and in the end, reached heights that most people will never touch. A spectacular tale, but a cautionary one. Thank you all for watching this Josh Gordon mini movie. If you enjoyed it, give it a like and also subscribe to the channel. We post videos throughout the week in addition to our NFL and NBA podcasts that we live stream right here on this channel every Wednesday night. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We post daily there. Those are both linked down in the description below. And if you also want to join our Discord, it's completely free. It's also linked down in the description below. We talk ball in there every single day. So. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.